The hardest and most intimidating part of the drawing process can be just getting started. When you have something you want to draw, it can be easy to get caught up in all of the detail and complexity, but I'm going to teach you a strategy that will allow you to simplify any subject. This is based on the idea that any subject, no matter how complex, can be simplified into basic shapes like circles, ovals, triangles, and rectangles. I'm going to teach you one of the most powerful drawing strategies you can learn that will allow you to draw literally any subject by breaking it down into basic shapes. So let's say you've selected a subject to draw, either from a reference photo or from life, and you have a blank sheet of paper in front of you. How do you begin? Now, I believe that the quality of your drawing will come down to the quality of questions that you ask yourself about your subject as you're drawing. So I'm going to teach you a series of five questions to ask yourself over and over again during the drawing process. First, I'm just gonna give you the list. And next, we're gonna go into the studio and I'm gonna show you how to actually apply these questions to any drawing. Number one, what is the biggest shape? Number two, what is its axis? Number three, how big does it need to be? Number four, where on the page does it need to go? And number five, what changes can I make? Now, before you begin any drawing, you're going to ask yourself the first four questions. This will allow you to figure out what the biggest shape in your subject is, what axis it's at, how big it needs to be, and where on the page it needs to go. Once you know this information, you're going to make your first attempt at drawing the biggest shape you can find in your subject. Once you've made that first attempt, you're going to ask yourself the fifth and final question, what changes can I make? So once you've made any necessary changes to the shape you've drawn, you're going to go back to the beginning of the list and make one minor change to the first question. This time you're going to ask, what is the next biggest shape? And you're going to repeat this series of five questions over and over and over again, working from the biggest shapes in your subject down to the smallest shapes. And by going through this process, you can figure out how to draw literally any subject from observation. So now let's head to my drawing board where I'm going to show you how to use these five questions to draw an actual subject. I really love drawing birds for this project because they are constructed from very simple shapes. You can see we have an oval for the bird's body, an oval for the head, triangle for the beak, a quadrilateral for the tail. So they're constructed of a small number of pretty basic shapes that you already know how to draw. So to start this drawing off, let's start with the very first question. What is the biggest shape? So before I answer, just take a look. When you look at this subject, what is the biggest shape in this bird? So hopefully you have guessed that it is the oval for the bird's body. Now, before I draw that shape though, I still have three more questions I wanna go through. What is its axis? So remember, an axis is the tilt of a shape. So if I put my pencil here, you can see that this oval is tilted. And it's slightly closer to being more vertical than it is horizontal, but you wanna get a sense of what the axis of this shape is. So before I draw anything, I'm gonna to move to question number three. How big does it need to be? So at this stage, you just wanna get a sense of how big you want the shape to be on the page. So you can see this is a pretty good sized oval. We don't need to be too specific yet. I know that I wanna draw an oval, that is tilted, slightly more upright. And I know I want it to be over to the right side of the page. So before I draw anything, I know what shape I'm gonna draw, what its axis is, how big I want it to be, and where on the page I want it to go. So of course, I'm going to start pantomiming because I'm not just gonna draw the shape. And I wanna watch my pencil, I wanna see if the shape is at the right axis, the oval is at the right amount of openness. So I'm just going to pantomime the shape and I'm gonna look back and forth from my reference image to my drawing to see, to make sure that they're matching up. So I'm gonna pantomime once I'm reasonably sure that the oval is at the right size, at the right shape, at the right axis, I'm going to put my pencil down and make my first attempt. And again, you can see this oval is light and soft. 
So now that I've made my first attempt, I'm going to go to the fifth and final question in the series, which is what changes do I need to make? So now that we're taking a look at this oval, is it the right size? Is it approximately the same size as the oval in the bird's body? I think it's pretty close. Is it at the right axis? Well, we can actually get the axis from this and pull it over. Looks pretty close. Is it the right size? Does it need to be bigger or smaller? And kind of get a sense of the overall size of the oval. And again, it's looking pretty close. It may be a little big, but I'm pretty happy with it. And finally, is it at the right location? So one thing I'm gonna do is check to see is do I have similar amounts of space to the right of the oval? Looks like I do. Similar amounts of space to the left. So I wanna see where the top of the oval is. I think it could go just a little higher and maybe down here it could go just a little higher as well. So one thing you're gonna see is I'm not erasing anything. I'm just going to alter the shape slightly by drawing right over it. When you're drawing on your own, you wanna make these shapes so light that you can see them on the page, but from about 10 to 15 feet away, you can no longer see them from that distance. So what is the next biggest shape in this drawing? Now, if you're not sure exactly which shape is the next biggest, that's fine. The goal is that you're generally working from big to small. You don't have to worry too much whether or not you're getting the shapes in the exact order of how big or small they are. I think that the next biggest shape is the quadrilateral for the bird's tail, but I don't draw yet. I go to the next question. What is its axis? What is the tilt of this shape? So you can see here that this shape is closer to being more horizontal. So it's not at an exact 45, it's tilted down just a little bit more than that. So I move to question number three. How big does it need to be? Well, we can see here that the length of the bird's tail is slightly shorter than this oval. So I know that the bird's tail needs to be a little shorter than the oval. So one thing that happens when we go through these questions again is you'll notice that during the second time through the questions, when we ask a question like how big does it need to be or where on the page does it need to go, we're actually answering those questions in reference to the shape that we've already drawn. So now we move to the fourth question. Where on the page does it need to go? Well, we know it's going to start probably about here and extend outward from the oval that we've previously drawn. Now I'm going to make my attempt. So again, I'm going to draw this quadrilateral on the page. Now, after I've made my attempt, we go to the fifth and final question in the series, what changes need to be made? You want to assume that there are changes you can make to this that are going to improve it or get it closer to the drawing. So one thing I see is that I think that maybe this needs to be moved up slightly. I'm going to move this up just slightly. I think the axis is a little too uh, far up, so I'm going to change the axis just a little bit. And I think it could be a little closer to the edge of the paper. So once again, you'll notice that I'm not erasing anything. I'm simply drawing right over the initial shape that I've made. One thing to note here is that you'll notice that my second attempt is actually slightly darker than my first attempt. The reason I do this is to provide a visual shorthand so I always know which attempt was more accurate. So if I move around the drawing and then come back to this area, I don't have to remember which one was the most accurate. I can see visually that this attempt is slightly darker and therefore slightly more accurate. And even if we look at the reference, you can see me going through the same thing the first time I drew it. And I tend not to erase these lines. I actually think they add some visual interest to the drawing. So now we're gonna go to the beginning of the series of questions again. What is the next biggest shape? I think it's probably the oval for the bird's head. What's its axis? Well, we can see it's tilted quite a bit. And again, I really find it useful to put my pencil up so I can see what the axis looks like. 
How big does it need to be? Well, we know it needs to be quite a bit smaller than the shape for the body. And where on the page does it need to go? So we know it needs to go above the oval for the bird's body. And we wanna leave a little space here. You can see if here's roughly the top of the oval for the bird's body, the oval for the head is up higher a little bit. So I know I'm going to be drawing an oval. I have a sense of the axis it's going to be. I know that it's going to be quite a bit smaller than the bird's body. How big yet? I'm not sure, but we can make adjustments later on. And I know that there needs to be some space in between the oval for the bird's body and the head. So I'm going to pantomime my shape and make my first attempt. And now, of course, I need to ask the fifth and final question in the series. What changes can I make? Well, there are a few things I see. One is I think that I've drawn the shape a little too far over to the right. I think the size is pretty good, and I think it actually needs to be tilted up a little more. So I'm just going to, again, draw right over this and make my second attempt. So one thing I wanna point out here is that I've been drawing for decades, and I don't even get it right the first time. I go through this process of adjustment throughout the entire drawing process. And the reason I think this is important is because so many beginners, when they make a simple mistake like this, they get upset, they get frustrated, or they beat themselves up about it. And I just want you to know that this is incredibly common. Even professionals make these kinds of little errors throughout the entire drawing process. So when you make these kinds of errors, don't worry about it. Just get to fixing them. Just move right on to asking what you can do about them and what you need to do to do better the next time. And you can make adjustments as often as you need during this process. So we've gone through three rounds of questions. It's given us the bird's body, the bird's tail, and the bird's head. Now, this is the process that I would use to move throughout this entire drawing focusing on smaller and smaller shapes until I've laid out everything important. But hopefully these first three shapes will give you a sense of how these questions work. So if you can draw a circle or an oval or a quadrilateral by using these five questions, you'll be able to draw nearly anything. And people often look at a subject like this and they see all of the detail in the feathers, they see tiny details in the feet, they see all kinds of texture and complex mark making, and they can tend to get overwhelmed. But our job at the beginning of a drawing is to simplify it. Instead of looking at a subject like this and seeing a bird, try and see it as simple shapes. If you ask somebody, can they draw a bird? Most people are going to say no. But if you ask them if they can draw an oval, yeah, an oval's not so complex. Can you draw a rectangle? Most people can draw a rectangle. So what we're doing is we're learning a process where we take a complex subject like this and turn it into a simple collection of basic shapes. And in doing so, you'll be able to draw nearly any subject. So now you've seen me use these five questions to draw the biggest and most important shapes of a subject. Now this process of simplifying a subject into basic shapes is how I start nearly every single drawing I do. It doesn't matter how complex the subject, any subject can be simplified into basic shapes. Now simplifying your subject into basic shapes is essential because it's so easy to get these basic forms wrong. So as you begin to add detail, shading, and texture, you can be confident that the basic foundational forms of your drawing are at the right size, they're in the right place, they're at the right axis, and that your drawing is in proportion. So here are some projects for you. First, you need some practice and experience drawing basic shapes. So I'm going to recommend that you draw a minimum of 100 circles, 100 ovals, 100 triangles, and 100 quadrilaterals. Now remember, this is the bare minimum. When I was learning to draw basic shapes, I would actually make it a habit of filling 10 pages front and back with circles or other basic shapes every single morning for a year. Throughout that year, I drew thousands, if not tens of thousands of basic shapes. I practiced circles and ovals more than any other shape. 
I did this so often that it became second nature. I no longer have to even think about it. So I'm recommending starting with 100, but remember, that's the bare minimum. You wanna draw these basic shapes as often as you can. If practicing basic shapes ever starts to seem boring to you, try and remind yourself that everything you're drawing is made of these basic shapes. So when you're practicing circles or ovals, you are practicing other subjects that you wanna draw. Next, I want you to select a subject and use these five questions to simplify your subject into its most basic shapes. Again, I highly recommend starting off with birds. But if you're feeling adventurous, remember, you can use these five questions to draw any subject. Just try and pick a subject that matches your skill level. If you're a beginning drawer, I wouldn't recommend jumping right into figure drawing. So once you've chosen a subject that's right for you, I want you to put these five questions into practice. Over time, these questions will start to become second nature. I no longer have to ask myself each individual question consciously. It's just become habit to start with the biggest shapes and work my way toward the smaller shapes. It's become a habit for me to start off every drawing using light, soft lines and adding darker lines as the drawing progresses. It's become a habit to start simply and work towards complexity. The more and more you use these five questions, the less and less you'll have to consciously ask them while you're drawing, and the quicker and quicker your drawing process will become. We all know that a house cannot stand without a solid foundation, but neither will a drawing. This strategy will allow you to lay a solid foundation of basic shapes for any subject. So as you layer on shading, detail, and texture, you know that these basic forms will be accurate and in proportion. So in this video, you saw me draw using a reference image. For free access to this reference image and other reference images you'll see me use in my videos, please visit the link in the description. And my goal with these videos is to provide high quality drawing instruction to as many people as possible. If you'd like to support me in this, please like, share, and most importantly, subscribe. Well, thank you so much for spending time with me, and I hope to see you back here for more videos.